Hello, this is Ben Stronick, and this is a video about how I template total hip arthroplasty with the use of TraumaCAD software. This is our AP pelvis radiograph. This is a standing view, which becomes very important later. This patient has a large osteonecrotic lesion with flattening of the femoral head, and decision has been made to perform a total hip replacement. You first right-click. This pulls up your menu and allows you to start the software. Now that TraumaCAD is running, you will be able to select the image, which is AP pelvis in this case, and click on the hip icon. This now pulls up your AP pelvis. You're now going to tell the software this is an AP view, and we're going to be doing a right total hip replacement. Your choices here are automatic, manual, or oversize. I will use the oversize feature typically with 115% oversize and this has been very accurate in my practice. We now accept this and go on to select the circle tool. I will drop the circle tool and measure the femoral head. This is helpful intraoperatively. I'll then move this out of the way where it's not over the hip of interest. Once this is done we will now go and select the implant we're going to use. I like to begin templating on the cup side, so we'll go ahead and select that cup. When you select your cup, this then also pulls up your leg length tool. So once the leg length tool comes up, I'll look for the teardrops if they're visible, and I'll set the line flat off of the teardrops. If you don't have teardrops, you'll have to use the ischial tuberosities. We'll then adjust the dots so they're in similar locations on the lesser trochanters, and if these aren't available, you can use the greater trochanters. I'll now drag that line out of the way, go back and select the cup, and now size the cup. This is a smaller patient with a 44 femoral head, and so we're going to start with the 50 or 52 cup. Typically in males, the cup will usually be 4 to 6 millimeters larger than the femoral head, and in females, 2 to 4 in this case. A little bit large for a female, but this was the right fit. I've selected 52 in this case, and we will now size this. When I size the cup, what I'm looking for is good fit with the inferior border against the inferior edge of the teardrop and the cup flush up against the ischial line. I will also look at the position of the cup in relation to the femoral head, and sometimes in larger males, the cup will actually be a little bit down below the teardrop. We're now going to move on to the femoral stem, and so we're going to add template and select our stem from the drop-down menu and just click on the stem of choice, and this will now drop the stem onto the radiograph. The stem is now shown in relative position in the proximal femur, and you can play with the standard or lateralized offset for this specific stem and see how that's going to change things, and then select different size stems as well. And you're looking for a good fit in the calcar. Uh, not too large, not too small, but fill up the calcar region. I'm going to have the attachment point set at zero, and then you can see what you're doing to your leg length and offset. So we want to adjust this down just a little bit, and you can see the numbers change for the leg length when you do that. The same is true with offset if you move it medial or lateral, and the yellow dot at the top of the yellow box will allow you to change rotation. This stem looks a little large at 11, so I'm going to go down to a size 10 and get a little bit better fit here. I'm now going to use a feature called the Attach to Cup where you right click and it hit Attach to Cup and now the red dot of the cup and the red dot of the stem are going to meet each other as if you've done a virtual reduction of the hip joint. The nice thing about this is it allows you to see what the change in leg length and offset is going to be with that combination and position of implants. In this case, there was very little change based on the fact that there was really no leg length discrepancy and very little change in the offset. We're now going to detach from cup again to put things back where they were before, and we're going to go ahead and get a, the ruler tool and measure from the top of the lesser trochanter to the cut edge of the stem. And we're going to utilize that intraoperatively to have a number to gauge where to make our net cut. I'll then go ahead and click on this number and click on the font because I like to make this bigger. I'll make it bold and I'll get a 16 font and this lets me see it intraoperatively across the room on the screen. 
So our net cut's going to be 10.2 millimeters in this case. I then like to use the note tool to add the basics about the implant so it's directly on the image and I can see it. So we're going to have a 52 cup. We've got a 10 standard stem. I'm then going to collect click on the font area again, blow this up to bold and 16 so I can see it. This lets you have a minimal amount of information on the screen and to me is easier to read than the annotation. So now click on the report tab. Uh, this is going to pull up uh, the report to save the case and you're going to click on save case. And now since I've done my annotations on the screen already, I'm going to turn this off. So I'm going to go to none here. And then once you hit OK, this is going to send the case back over to your PAX system to save it internally in the PAX um, folder for that patient. Once that's done, you are ready to move on to another case. For this example, I'm now going to demonstrate how I utilize the templating intraoperatively to help me position the implants. So this shows the intraoperative x-ray on the left and our templating on the right. And earlier in the procedure, I've utilized my template to make my net cut at 10 millimeters and also to see where this exits, which is in the piriformis fossa in this case. At this point in the surgery, I've placed the final cup and I have a brooch in with a trial standard neck and a trial head and acetabular liner. We also previously measured the actual femoral head from the patient and we check this across the measurement that we got of the femoral head preoperatively to ensure that our oversized calibration was correct. And the first thing we want to do intraoperatively is reproduce that AP standing radiograph from clinic. So we look at the obturator foramina on the intraop and compare this to the clinical radiograph and we're going to reshoot the x-ray until we have this correct. We also want to ensure this is a true AP radiograph with the pubic symphysis in line with the sacrum. We're next going to look at our leg length line which has already been drawn. and We use the ischial tuberosities in this case because the teardrops were not quite as clear. We can then look and see where the line hits on the lesser trochanters to determine how close we are on leg length and we can also look at the gap medial to lateral to determine our offset. We also want to look at our cup position and see what our abduction angle is and we can also appreciate the version of the cup as well. I then also want to look at the fit. Is this the right stem? Is it in varus or valgus or is it well aligned? And how good is our fit and fill proximally? What is very helpful at this point is if anything needs to be changed I can make that adjustment. If the stem is undersized or in varus we can go up on the stem size. If I need to change the abduction angle or the antiversion of the cup, that can also be accomplished. We can also change the stem offset, the liner offset, or the head offset if needed. Next, I'm going to compare the preoperative template radiograph to the postoperative result to show how templating helped us get to the final product. So looking at our radiographs in comparison, here's the final implants that were placed. And the patient ended up getting a 52 cup and a 9 standard stem instead of a 10 standard stem. And this is the stem that we had intraoperatively that showed good fit. And you can see postoperatively a 9 had very nice fit in the canal as well. We will now move on to evaluate the implant positions. And we will start by drawing a leg length line across the teardrops, which is well visualized on this radiograph. We'll now take this line once it's drawn, and we will move it down to the level of the lesser trochanters. And you can do this off the bottom of the ischial tuberosities, or you can go off the top of them. And it should be fairly close to flush with the tuberosities as well as a comparison. I will then look and see where this strikes on the lesser trochanters. And in this case, it has restored the leg lengths or maybe just a touch long on the right with plans of returning to do the left total hip replacement. We can then also look at our offsets and see the standard stem is actually added, just a little bit of offset. I am now going to utilize our angle tool in the pack system and look at our abduction angle of the cup. So line will now be drawn again uh, flat to the teardrops. And then to check the abduction angle, you want to draw a line from the most medial point up to the most lateral superior point on the cup that's visible and this gives you your abduction angle of 43 degrees. 
Thank you for your time, and I hope this video was helpful as you move forward with templating total hip replacement.